first thing to do is press and hold button number one on the first Behringer unit, hold that down and then turn the power on. And then press the store and edit buttons over on the right hand side, press them together and that puts it into edit mode. Then use rotary number one to set it to USB mode one. Rotary number two, set that to channel one. Rotary number three, set that to normal. Rotary number four, set that to P1. Rotary number five, we'll use that to set the ID of this first unit and this will be set to ID one. Rotary number six, set that to single. And then rotary seven, I set that to 100. And rotary eight, I also set that to 100. Not quite sure what that does, but the unit seems pretty happy. I have to read the manual some more. And then press the exit button, takes it out of edit mode, and then power down the unit and then press and hold button number four this time, turn the power back on, and this will now put this first unit into Mackie emulation mode for sonar. And that's the first unit done, ready to go. Now we go to the second unit, press button number one, hold it down, turn the power on just like before, then press the store and edit buttons at the same time. And this will now put this unit into edit mode. Then just like before, we use rotary number one, set that to USB mode one, rotary two, set that to channel one, rotary three, set that to normal, rotary number four, set that to P1, and then rotary number five, probably most important bit here, set that ID to ID two, and that way the computer will recognize it as separate to the other one, a different unit. Then use rotary number six, just like before, set that to single, and then rotary seven and eight, I again have those set to 100, and it seems to be quite happy doing that. And then just like before, we now press exit, and that takes it out of the edit mode, and then turn off the unit. And then press and hold button number four, power up the unit again, and this will now get it into Mackie emulation mode for sonar. So now you've got two, Behringer BCFs ready to go for sonar. Now we turn our attention to the computer and we need to open up the BC Edit software and double click on that. And I pretty much use this just to check that both units are uh, functioning and connected to the computer. So in the top left hand corner, there is a scan button. Click on that and it will now sense to see what's attached and it should show BCF ID one and ID two. And it does, for some reason it's got ID two listed twice, but that uh, doesn't affect it negatively in any way, so it doesn't really worry me. And then I minimize that, and then I open up Sonar. And uh, that's pretty much all I use the edit software for there. You really can't use it for anything else in Mackie emulation mode. Uh, open up a project here, I've got 16 tracks on this. First thing I do is go to the Options menu, and I need to add both of the Behringers as MIDI devices. The first MIDI device on the input port is going to be shown as a BCF2000, check that box. Second one is a USB audio device, check that. And then for the output ports, uh, again, I've got USB audio device, check that, and BCF2000. So now they're added as MIDI devices, click OK. Now we need to add the first one as a control surface. So options menu, control surfaces, and in that box, there is a little yellow star. Click on that to add a controller. And this first controller, first Behringer, you're gonna call the Mackie control. And then the input port is going to be BCF2000 for this first one. And the output port is going to be BCF2000 as well. Click on OK. And then we look over on the track view. And to the left of that, we should now see this controller. The blue colors over on the left of the track view indicate it's controlling tracks one through eight. Now we add the second one. Click on a yellow star. This one also is going to be added as a Mackie control. Don't call it a Mackie control XT. That would be bad. And then this one, input port is USB, USB audio device. MIDI output port is USB audio device as well. Click on OK. Now when you've done that, it shows uh, the color to recognize it should be red. And we should see that over in the track view. But if we look over there, we're not seeing it. All we're seeing is the blue still for tracks one through eight. And on the top left hand corner of the screen, there's a little thing there which shows Mackie control both one and two. And you see there to the right of that is both of them are showing us controlling tracks one through eight. Uh, we should be going through 16. So that is a problem. And uh, 
I had this for quite a few hours and it took me a while to figure it out. And then over here on the controllers themselves, the faders are both set the same way here for tracks one through eight. And you touch one fader and it controls the fader on the other unit. So that needs to be changed. Go to the box again there, select Mackie Control 2, click on the control surfaces icon. And that opens up a box and on the bottom right hand corner of that box, there is a little thing, click on the configure layout, then go to the second Behringer unit, turn rotary control on, just, to, just clockwise very slightly, and then click the press again when done on the screen, then click OK. And then if you look at the unit, as soon as you, you click OK, those faders should now, they jump into place. They are now controlling tracks nine through 16, which is what we want. And we verify that. Um, the whole thing, the Mackie controllers there, both of them actually now show 1 through 16 as the control. And you see there you got the blue and then you got the red for tracks 9 through 16. So um, everything's functioning just right. The faders, if you move one fader now, it controls only that track that it should be and it doesn't affect the other units. So that's the way it should work and uh, hopefully this is helpful to someone. Thanks for watching. All the best.